their face. They said, oh, no, that's all right. I said, no, really, it's for his safety. Sure. You know, right. and they okay. said, uh, no, we'll leave the cards and letters out here. And I thought, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, these are teachers, and they're afraid. Yeah. So that's when I, and you just mm -hmm. start seeing it. You start seeing it all around the hospital mm -hmm. and where you didn't see it before, you know. Of course. So how did that make you, I mean, obviously you felt maybe some isolation mm -hmm. from all of that. I mean, uh, is it something that surprised you in a lot of ways and something that you just never really got comfortable with or, or at time you just learned to not have it bother you as much? I, I think people's reactions, you have, you know, you, you notice it, mm -hmm. but you don't focus on it Sure. because yeah. you realize they, they just don't understand. Mm -hmm. Now, comments made that that's a little bit different sure. i mean but looks and people backing away yeah, you know sure. are not wanting to be with you in the elevator <laughs> you know sure. i mean you you sense that yeah you know? i bet you do and so and i'm sure that some of the comments were really hurtful and mm -hmm. um, you know i just wonder how how what gave you the strength and your family the strength to to get through all of that wanting my son to get better Sure. You know, yeah. wanting right. to give him the mm -hmm. life to where he could, mm -hmm. you know, have hope and and just be supportive of what the things that he wanted in life. I mean, at first, I mean, when you think you're only going to live three to six months, it's like, you know, boy, you're very, very protective. And you, of course, then he starts getting healthy. And then you, the highlight of his day is his sister getting home from school wow. and or me getting home from work. I sure. mean, because he's there by himself and he's watching I Love Lucy and Andy Griffith on TV. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, the highlight of his day was when we got home and he started gaining weight and he's feeling great. He's thinking, you know, why am I just sitting here? And I just felt like he was waiting to die. Oh, and that was, that's right? just really hard to huh, accept because you're like waiting on three to six months, you sure. know, and mm -hmm. waiting for, it, for, for something to happen to you. But he lived over five years. After, and I know. Right? Yeah. So, that, I mean, I'm glad I did what I did. But, and, of and Because it, otherwise, I mean, uh, that's a long time out of yes, your life. Five and a half years is a long time exactly. out of your life to just sit at home and, sure. and wait. And I don't, I don't think he would have lived as long because I think mm -hmm. the fight to go to school... I think that gave him something to drive for. Sure. I mean, accomplish. And exactly. as long as he had that fight, you know, it's like he's going to accomplish something. He's yeah. going to get to go back to school. Yeah, that really says a lot, doesn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, that, that kind of determination. Yeah. But, you know, something to really fight to live for, mm -hmm. too. Uh, why do you think, I don't know if this is the right way to say it, that people didn't like him, but maybe that is accurate. But, I mean, why, why do you think he was... He received so much of of language against him and, and isolation and harassment. Is it, is it just as simple as maybe the fact that they were not knowledgeable or fearful? Or I think they were not knowledgeable on AIDS, but I think at the same time, they didn't want to deal with AIDS. They thought it was a punishment from God. A lot of people, especially the religious community, felt like uh, because of religious and moral issues that surrounded the disease that you had to be gay, you had to be an IV drug user, you had to have done something bad or wrong or you wouldn't get this disease. And, and maybe even something bad or wrong at home. Right. right? Well, they thought that too. They thought, right? you know, yeah. there's some funny things going on in that household. That's why oh. that boy got AIDS. She's just trying to make up excuses why oh. he got AIDS. And I would try to explain to people he got it from his hemophilia, mm -hmm. used the medicine used to treat his hemophilia, and they'd said, well, why don't you hear of others? Well, you didn't till 1985 exactly. as they started exactly. bringing in all hemophiliacs. So, yeah. it, you know, it was just like they thought I was just making things up, you know, to excuses. Sure. Well, so uh, I know there's probably no adequate words to explain how a mother would respond to a diagnosis uh, like this. I mean... How was it for you? You know, I was a factory worker. I was a single mm -hmm. mom, and mm -hmm. I wanted my kid to live. Mm -hmm. I, want, mm -hmm. I wanted him to have hope. I wanted him to just be everything that he could be. And I just thought, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Because I was, a, I was, you know, a very naive person. I mean, I, 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 was, I was not well educated, mm -hmm. and I just felt like, but... I just found that, that because of the love of your children, you could do a lot of things that you never thought you could. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Ryan, I'm going to do it, whatever mm -hmm. it takes. Whatever you want to accomplish in life, I'm going to try to see that you could do it. Mm -hmm. and you know, and a lot of people know that, and a lot of people really admire you well, uh, for that. It wasn't easy. Of course. <laughs> yeah, wasn't I'm, easy. I'm sure but, it wasn't yeah. easy at all. 
maybe only a person who is a mother could maybe completely understand the power of uh, power of that. And of course, we know there were so many harsh reactions of mm -hmm. of people and, and uh, all the way from just you know, words and looks to, you know, a shot, uh, you know, a bullet shot into your mm -hmm. home. And um, uh, why do you think that that, that happened? I, you know, I, I think they wanted us to leave. I think oh. they, mm -hmm. I think it was, they felt like, you know, that if they could do, make us do something, then they wouldn't have to deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, I remember the comments saying, why don't you just keep him at home and play games with him? I'm like, oh my gosh, can you imagine a 13-year-old yes, sure. kid keeping him home and playing games? Well, play two games and then they're That's tired right. of the playing games. Yeah, sure, right. So, I mean, it was just kind of um, the things that, that people would go through to. I just could not understand how any of these parents couldn't understand what I was going through. Mm -hmm. And be thankful that they they weren't sure. going through what so I was I bet going that was through. Very disappointing. Yeah, and because I just couldn't understand why yeah, they couldn't sure. be just thankful that it wasn't their kid that was diagnosed with right. AIDS. Yeah. Did you ever feel unsafe? Um, after the bullet hole, um, mm -hmm. yes, but we weren't home. Oh, now right. my daughter Andrea, I think, was the most fearful. Uh -huh. uh, my daughter Andrea was like, you know, she really was afraid that that there was going to be some crazy person out there that would mm -hmm. actually try to harm our family. Sure. You know, some of that was a long time ago. And so now this is 20 years later, and I, people know a lot more about HIV AIDS, and I hope that they don't stigmatize people as much. But do sometimes things continue? I, I do hear. I hear it all the time that where people directed are discriminated. Directed to you? Yeah, no, but, well, well okay. even directed to us, yes, but at the same time, mm -hmm. two people with AIDS. But luckily, because we have the drugs and treatment now, I think a lot of people choose not to be public about it, not yes, to, sure. uh, because they don't want to lose their jobs and their insurance and so forth. And they do relatively want to live, you know, sure. a life like Ryan, just a kind of a normal life as, as, as much as possible. But take meds, you know, mm -hmm. I, think, I think there's a lot of people that, that, that would enjoy that. They, they don't want to be... Um, criticized or because they have AIDS or people dissect them because they have AIDS, course, you know, sure. uh, or like, what'd you do or how'd you get it? Or so uh, people I think are self-respecting in that way. Mm -hmm. But is any things that uh, you feel hurtful continue toward you? Well, or, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean do you mean, still you have still... things still, even after 20 years? After 20 years, you still have people that say that with what they knew at the time, they felt like they were doing the right thing. Sure, and then you sure. have people say it became so ugly, they didn't want to have an opinion because it would oh. create so much controversy. Oh, and then you have people that are in complete denial, and mm -hmm. they say it's God's punishment. and that Still now. I mean, even yes. today, you, wow. you will have people. And mm -hmm. it's funny, at the Children's Museum the other day, a lady come in and she said this whole story is a lie, that none of this is true. Well, his, you know, <laughs> at his exhibit at the children's at his, museum. His exhibit wow. at the children's yeah, museum. So, so, so she was teaching these three kids that was with her mm -hmm. that the story was, was a lie, lie. and yes. that and this and, is, you know, and it's like 2010. 2010. Yeah. Wow. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Andrea. How how was all this for her? How did she react, and how did that impact her life? You think? Andrea was two years younger than Ryan, mm -hmm. and she was like. Ryan was her best friend. Everything she did, she played with Ryan. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, she was kind of a tomboy, and she liked the G.I. Joe. She liked everything that Ryan liked because mm -hmm. Ryan was had this huge imagination, you know, where he could really get into <laughs> characters and all that. Yeah. And she liked do it. She liked playing with wow. Ryan. But I think I kept her in skating. Her, she roller skated competition. She had done that way before Ryan got sick, and she was quite good. Mm -hmm. She was a national champion roller oh. skater, and... And I, even though we couldn't afford it, really, I tried to keep her in it as much as I could because it was a great outlet for her. Sure. And it was a great time for me and her because mm -hmm. we would go to skating meets, me and her. Oh, and it was wow, t quality time spent with her. And that was important to me to try sure. to keep her, sure. you know, involved in, mm -hmm. in our lives, too, 